Bienvenidos estudiantes a la clase de Español 1. This is Spanish 1, Chapter 10, Lesson 27A. In this lesson, we will cover the first portion of Lesson 27 in Chapter 10. Some of this will be review. Some of this will be new material. So make sure that you are ready to go. In your textbook, Lesson 27 starts on página 224, 224. So let's have your books open there and we'll get started. We've been talking about Ecuador. I did add to my playlist a travel video. It's called a cinematic travel film. I thought there were some pretty cool uh, scenes that dealt with tourism and a lot of uh, things that I thought you might enjoy. So take a second and watch that if you haven't done that yet. I think it'll help you kind of appreciate some of the natural beauty of Ecuador. The capital of Ecuador we know is Quito. Now, as far as homework check goes for this lesson, your homework was to copy down those salvation principles, both in Spanish, then in, then in English, and then in Spanish. So you have both of those translated there. Now, I hope you are working on those and learning those. And remember, we did mention, too, that you need to have uh, las referencias, the references as well, memorized. So know those. I hope you copied those down for your homework. And then we'll move on into our lesson for today. Let's review el versículo. Uh, we have, this is the third lesson that we've had for chapter 10. So we have three verses that we're working on. Let's say this one together, clase. Apocalipsis 1, 5 y 6. Al que nos amó y nos lavó de nuestros pecados con su sangre, a él sea gloria e imperio por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. Apocalipsis 1, 5 y 6. Our next verse, la próxima versículo, el próximo versículo. Say it with me, clase. Juan 20, 21. Entonces, Jesús les dijo otra vez, Pasa vosotros, como me envió al Padre, así también yo os envío. Juan 20, 21. And then el versículo que estamos aprendiendo en esta lección, the verse that we are learning in this lesson, es Romanos 4, 3. Let's say this one together, and then we'll do a little bit of review word by word. Clase conmigo. Romanos 4.3 Creyó Abraham a Dios y le fue contado por justicia. Romanos 4.3 Let's go through and practice this. You've done this with me before, but it's good for review. ¿Cuál palabra nos falta aquí, clase? Dame la palabra en español, inglés, español. ¿Cuál palabra nos falta? La respuesta es contado. Counted, contado. Número dos, ¿cuál palabra nos falta aquí? La respuesta es fue, was, fue. Número tres, ¿cuál palabra nos falta aquí? La respuesta es Dios, God, Dios. Número cuatro, ¿cuál palabra nos falta aquí? La respuesta es Justicia, justice or righteousness, justicia. Y la última, the last one, número cinco, ¿cuál palabra nos falta? Aquí la respuesta es creyó, believed, creyó. I hope you're working on those verses you will need for this Lesson 27 quiz. You will need to be able to fill in the blanks for these verses, so make this verse, so make sure that you are working on that. To move into the Dialogo Especial, we've reviewed this a couple of times, but as we go through each part of Lesson 27, I want to make sure that you are listening to it again. So we're going to take a moment and let you listen to this one more time. Lección 27, parte 6. Dialogo Especial. Follow along on page 229 of your textbook. Maritza testifica. Todos los sábados, el grupo juvenil está a cargo de un club bíblico para niños. Hoy Maritza relató la historia de Nicodemo, Juan 3. Durante el recreo, Luis, uno de los niños Otero, se acercó a Maritza con una pregunta. Maritza, ¿crees tú que yo voy a ir al cielo cuando muera? No, Luis, si no eres salvo no vas a ir al cielo. Pues yo quiero ir al cielo. Bueno, vamos a hablar. Luis, la Biblia dice que en el cielo no hay pecado. Sin embargo, en Romanos 3.23, Dios dice que todos somos pecadores. Léelo, Luis. Por cuanto todos pecaron y están destituidos de la gloria de Dios. Luis, ¿eres tú pecador? 
Sí, hago muchas cosas malas. Entonces, ¿eso quiere decir que no puedo ir al cielo? Vamos a ver. Mira lo que Dios dice en Romanos 6, 23. La paga del pecado es muerte, mas la dádiva de Dios es vida eterna en Cristo Jesús, Señor nuestro. Aunque eres pecador, Dios te ama. Dios te ama tanto que envió a su Hijo Jesucristo al mundo. En la cruz, Jesús murió en tu lugar para pagar el precio de tus pecados. ¿Él murió por mí? Sí, Luis. Murió por ti y por mí y por todo el mundo. Él quiere perdonar tus pecados y darte vida eterna. Juan 3, 16 dice, Porque de tal manera amó Dios al mundo que ha dado a su Hijo unigénito, para que todo aquel que en él cree no se pierda, más tenga vida eterna. ¿Qué tengo que hacer? Solo tienes que confesar tus pecados y pedirle perdón a Dios. ¿Crees que Jesús murió por ti? Sí, lo creo con todo el corazón. Ahora mismo voy a pedirle perdón a Cristo. Okay, so as we're going through those, as we're listening to that lecture over and over, I hope more and more of it is becoming clear to you. If there are words that you don't understand, look them up. Find out exactly what each part is saying, and also make sure that you're paying attention to those italicized words that are in the margin. That'll help you to understand some of that uh, different dialogue. All right, so here are those scripture truths that we've been talking about. Cinco versículos de la Biblia para mostrarles a sus amigos el plan de salvación. These are five Bible verses in Spanish that can help you to be able to share the gospel with people that you might know en español. Número uno, I want you to say the principle in Spanish, then English, then Spanish again after me, clase. Soy pecador, I am a sinner, soy pecador. No puedo salvarme a mí mismo. I cannot save myself. No puedo salvarme a mí mismo. Número tres. Dios me ama. God loves me. Dios me ama. Número cuatro. Cristo murió por mí. Christ died for me. Cristo murió por mí. Y número cinco, si creo en Él, soy salvo. If I believe on Him, I am saved. Si creo en Él, soy salvo. And then, of course, make sure that you know those references that are listed right there for each of those salvation truths. We're reviewing our pronunciation here. We'll go through this rather quickly because we've been working on it already. Che. Remember that che, two symbols, one letter. Let's practice a few of these words. This is a very English sound, so it shouldn't be too difficult for us to master. Repeat these words after me, clase. Pancho. Leche. Noche. Ocho. Derecha. Chévere. So those words use the ch sound, which is very similar to our English word church. So it shouldn't be a difficult sound for you to master. Let's take a look at this letter. This letter is in your textbook on 224, 224. And again, I just want you to follow along as uh, we listen to this letter being read for us. Lección 27, parte 2. Lectura. Follow along on page 224 of your textbook. Una carta de Quito. Quito, Ecuador, 30 de mayo de 1992. Mi querida Maritza. Recibí tu carta del 12 de este mes y la leí con mucho interés. Echo de menos a todos mis compañeros del Colegio Luz de Vida. Aquí en Ecuador mi familia está bien, pero siempre pensamos en nuestras amistades de allá. Mis hermanos creyeron que el equipo de fútbol del colegio iba a ganar el campeonato otra vez. Fue una lástima que perdió. Nosotros fuimos al estadio el sábado pasado para ver un partido de fútbol. Vimos al mejor equipo de Brasil ganarle al equipo de Perú. Fue un partido emocionante. Nuestros vecinos, la familia Otero, son nuestros mejores amigos en Ecuador. Fueron muy amables con nosotros cuando llegamos a Quito. Muchas veces nos ayudaron. El señor Otero le dio a papá un mapa de la ciudad y le enseñó las tiendas, los bancos, la oficina de correo y otros sitios más. Pepe, Marisela y Luis nos presentaron a sus amigos. De vez en cuando, mis hermanos y yo salimos con ellos. 
Ayer papá los invitó a nuestra casa para cenar. Queremos ganarnos para Cristo. Recuerdos a todos los compañeros del colegio. Con mucho cariño, Silvia. So that's just a quick letter from Silvia. I hope you caught a lot of what was in there. If not, again, look those up. But it's just a good exercise for us to hear uh, native speakers reading the letter, understanding some of the some of the lilt and the rhythm of the language. So it's good for us to listen. The grammar for this lesson, as we move into the grammática, we are on página 225 in el libro, 225 in your book, and we're still talking about the pretérito. Now remember, the pretérito is that past conjugation that occurred. It happened. It was an event, or it took place. El pretérito de ir en ser. Ir is our verb that means to go. Ser is our verb that means to be. But remember, it's not location and it's not condition. It's everything else. So ir en ser are very interesting in español porque los verbos son muy similares, son identicales. They're the same. They are conjugated the same way en el pretérito. Uh, las formas del verbo ir, clase, yo, fui, tú, fuiste, usted, fue, nosotros fuimos, ustedes, ellos, ellas, fueron. And ser, to be, is the same conjugation. And you see that here right across the page. It's the same conjugation for ir and ser. Fui, fuiste, fue, fuimos, fueron. Now, fortunately for us, these two verbs are different enough where we can tell which verb is being used based on context. Ir means to go, and ser means to be. So the verbs are very, very different in the context how they're used. Let's look at the sentence down at the bottom of this slide. La, uh, the preterite forms of ir and ser are just the same. So it depends on the context. I know one thing that I hope you're noticing right away, this is something that we've talked about repeatedly with the verb ir, is that it is almost always followed by a. Fui a Bogotá. You see how that one's used right there. I went to Bogotá. That a ah is a big clue that we are using ir and not ser. Look at the example right across the column. Fui estudiante en Colombia. I was a student in Colombia. I can tell there that it's ser because I'm not using a ah after the verb. Remember, ir a, ah, ir a, ah, ir a. Ah. So when you see that a ah here, you are almost certain that it is being used as ir, to go, and not ser, to be. Let's practice some of these just a little bit. Actividad 1 is on página 225 en el libro. Let's see how we can do on these. Let's look at the modelo together. Todo el mundo necesita vacaciones. The whole world needs a vacation. Las siguientes personas fueron a ciudades hispanas en sus vacaciones. The following people went to Hispanic cities on their vacation. Diga donde fueron. Tell where they went to. So let's look at the modelo together. The example right here. Martin, that's a person, and then we have Quito, which we know is the capital of Ecuador. Martin fue a Quito. There's our answer. Martin fue a Quito, which means Martin went to Quito. Martin fue a Quito. I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I'd like you to do the odds on a blank worksheet page, on a blank workbook page, or in your notes. There's somewhere we can look at them together. We're going to do uno, tres, Cinco y siete in los cuadernos. Go ahead and pause the video and let's get going on those and then we'll check them together. All right, I hope those went well for you. Let's take a look at your answers. Make sure before you continue that you have finished that activity so that we can check your answers together. As always, remember, if you don't have correct answers, go ahead and mark those corrections in red. That way you can ask about what you missed so you know why you missed what you missed. So let's look at numero uno together. Ramona fue a Lima. Ramona went to Lima. And you can see here we've got that a ah, because we are using fue as ir. Numero tres. Tomás fue a Santo Domingo. Tomás went to Santo Domingo. Numero cinco. Yo fui a Caracas. I went to Caracas. Numero siete. Paco y yo fuimos a Asunción. Paco and I went to Asunción. So check those answers, and again, let me know if you have questions so we can make sure that you understand why you missed what you missed. Actividad 2, as we continue practicing, Actividad 2 is going to be over on the 226, 226, and the 
answer the questions. Now, your answers are going to be quite a bit different uh, depending on what day you're watching this video, but let's try this together so we can see um, what we're doing. So just answer the questions. Let's answer them. Let's answer them in complete sentences, but do this on a blank area in your workbook so we can check it together. Let's have you do numeros uno, tres y cinco. Go ahead and pause the video, get that activity done, and then we'll check it together. Okay, let's take a look at your answers. Hope that went well for you. Numero uno. The question was in numero uno, ¿Qué día fue ayer? What day was yesterday? So the answer for numero uno is right here. Ayer fue, and then you would need to have the day of the week. Ayer fue domingo. Yesterday was Sunday. Ayer fue lunes. Yesterday was Monday. Ayer fue martes. Yesterday was Tuesday. So make sure that you have the day of the week, whatever day yesterday was for número uno. Número tres, the question was, ¿A qué hora fue tu clase de historia ayer? Remember that expression, ¿A qué hora? is at what time. So it's asking for a specific clock time. ¿A qué hora fue tu clase de historia ayer? At what time was your history class yesterday? Well, I guess it depends on when you had your history class yesterday, obviously. Everybody's time is going to be different, but we want a clock time here. So numero tres would be, let's say you had your class yesterday at 2 p.m. Then we would say, la clase historia fue a las dos de la tarde. La clase de historia fue a las dos de la tarde. It was at 2 o'clock, whatever time you had your history class ayer, yesterday. Numero cinco. Fuiste a la iglesia el domingo pasado. Now remember, fuiste there is the two form. So it's asking, did you go to church last Sunday? El domingo pasado is last Sunday. Did you go to church last Sunday? So, número cinco, sí, fui a la iglesia el domingo pasado. Or if you weren't able to go to church last Sunday, then you would say, no, no fui a la iglesia el domingo pasado. Again, make notes of the ones that you didn't get correct or that you have questions on. That way we can make sure when we meet together that you are understanding why you missed what you missed. Let's move on to actividad tres. Actividad tres. Read the following paragraphs. Uh, tell whether the word, each word in bold print is the preterite tense of ser or ir. Now remember, we talked about some specific clues. Remember that ser will be followed by things like physical description, characteristics, time. Ir will almost always be followed by a, which tells us that it's a destination. All right. So take a second, look through those, and then I want you to tell me of the bold verbs that are in the paragraphs, is that ser or is it ir? Go ahead and do these on a section in your workbook. And let's get those marked and we'll come back together and check your answers. All right, let's take a look, see how you did on this one. We've got Oh, I'll put myself over here. I'm gonna, there we go. So the first one, mi abuelo fue misionero por muchos años. Uh, the, in line one here, we have ser. Then this one's ir. I hope you noticed that we have the ah right there telling us that that was ir. In line two, this verb is ir. Again, the ah right after it. In line four, line cuatro, we have ser. Notice no a. Ah. Fueron los mejores años de nuestras vidas. They were the best years of our lives. So that's ser, not to go, it's to be. Uh, line cinco, this one is ir. Fuimos a visitar. We went to visit. Line siete, we have two of them. This one is ir. Notice um, this one's a little bit different. We'll come, back. we'll come back to that one. And this one is ser. Let's check this one for just a second because this one doesn't exactly have... The, it doesn't have the ah that I told you to look out for with this form of the verb. So how did we know this one was ir when we didn't have that ah there? Well, here's how we did it. Look at the translation. Fuimos en barco. We went on a boat. Obviously here, this isn't saying we were a boat. So it's not going to be ser. It's ir, to go. We went on a boat. And in the last line, line eight, this one is... In 1960, un misionero fue para vivir con ellos. He went in order to live with them. So again, the ir a will get you most of the time. 
but make sure as well that you're looking at the context to make sure that you know whether this is ir or ser. Again, if you have questions on these, let me know. Let's look at actividad cuatro. Actividad cuatro en el libro. Actividad cuatro está en página 226, 226. Como presidente de tu clase, quieres saber qué interés tienen los estudiantes en ciertas actividades. As president of your class, you want to know what interests each of the students have in certain activities. Pregúntales. There's the command form. Pregúntales. Ask your friends. Si fueron a los siguientes lugares el mes pasado y cuántas veces fueron. If they went to do, if they went to these particular places and how many times they went. Luego, la clase puede preparar un informe estadístico. We're not going to do a statistical report based on this. But I just want to walk through this activity for with me so you can see how we would form the questions. Let's look at the modelo together. Estudiante 1 would say, uh, based on this information that's given, a un partido de baloncesto to a basketball game. So the question is, did you go to a basketball game last month? Fuiste a un partido de baloncesto el mes pasado? Did you go to a basketball game last month? And the, the answer would be, si fui. Yes, I went. Or no, no fui. Then you would ask again, ¿cuántas veces fuiste? How many times did you go? Estudiante dos would say, fui una vez. I went one time. Or fui cuatro veces. I went four times. Again, notice how when we have a word that ends in a Z, like this, and we go to make it plural, we have to change that Z to a C before we add the ES, veces. So for numero uno, we'll just do one or two of these together. A un restaurante, I would ask, ¿Fuiste a un restaurante el mes pasado? Did you go to a restaurant last month? And the answer would be C, fui, I went. Or no, no fui, I didn't go. ¿Cuántas veces fuiste? How many times did you go to this restaurant? ¿Cuántas veces fuiste? Fui dos veces. I went two times a un restaurante, to a restaurant. Número tres, a un partido de deportes. Why don't you write the question for estudiante uno, estudiante dos, y estudiante tres, estudiante uno, y write this whole conversation back and forth, just as it's done in the model. And let's just have you do número tres. Go ahead and pause the video. I want you to write this in your workbook in the blank space that you have. Write the entire conversation for numero tres. Okay, let's check your answers. I hope that went okay for you for numero tres. A un partido de deportes. This is a sports game. So the question would be just like estudiante uno en el modelo. It would be, ¿Fuiste a un partido de deportes el mes pasado? Did you go to a sports game last month? The answer would be C. Si, fui. Yes, I went. Or no, no fui. No, I did not go. Then the question would be asked, ¿Cuántas veces fuiste? How many times did you go? And the answer would be however many times you chose for your final answer. Fui una vez. Or fui cinco veces. However many times. Let's move on. Two more verbs we need to talk about in the preterite tense. And again, remember, we're still talking about the preterite. That's the past tense. Um, dar and ver are similar, but they're a little bit different. Unlike ir and ser, which are identical, dar and ver are just a little bit different. Let's go through the forms for these. Remember that dar is to give and ver is to see. Dar to give, ver to see. So look at these conjugated forms and notice how they're really similar, but they're a little bit different. So for dar, di, diste, dio, dimos, and dieron. I give, or I'm sorry, I gave. It's past tense, remember. I gave, you gave, he, she, or you gave, we gave, you all gave, or they gave. This is the conjugated forms of Yo di, tu diste, usted dio, él dio, ella dio, nosotros dimos, ustedes dieron, ellos dieron, ellas dieron. Make sure you know those conjugated forms.
and we'll practice with those in just a bit. And then right across the column, let's look at the conjugated forms of the verb yeah, that's to see. Yo vi. Tu viste. Usted vio. Él vio. Ella vio. Nosotros vimos. Ustedes vieron. Ellos vieron. That's the conjugated forms for the verb there. Make sure you know those. So really the only difference, I hope you noticed, is that first letter. For dar, obviously de, and for ver, it's de. So that's the only difference between those two conjugations. So if you kind of hook those together in your mind, you'll remember what the conjugated forms are for dar, to give, and ver, to see. Let's practice just a little bit with these, and I keep putting the answers out there for you, but I'm supposed to. Don't look. All right. You got a freebie on that one, guys. Let's take a look at these questions here. Actividad 5. Actividad 5 is on página 227. Roberto recibió muchos regalos en su cumpleaños. Roberto received a lot of gifts for his birthday. That's a good thing. Diga que le dieron las siguientes personas. Tell what the following people gave him. So we're going to look and see what the presents are that Roberto got for his birthday. Let's look at the modelo together. Anita, this is the person who came to the party and gave him a gift. So Anita gave him un sombrero. Anita gave him a sombrero. So that's what we're looking for in our Spanish response here for the modelo. Anita le dio un sombrero. The le here refers to him or Roberto, the birthday boy. Anita le dio un sombrero. Anita gave him un sombrero. I'd like you to pause the video and do one, three, cinco, y siete. Uno, tres, cinco, y siete. And then we'll check those in just a second. All right, I hope those went well, well for you. I already showed you these answers by mistake just a second ago, so hopefully you got these right. Número uno, let's look at it together. Sus padres le dieron un reloj. His parents gave him a watch. Nice gift. Número tres. Marcos le dio unos calcetines. Marcos gave him some socks. Socks? Who invited that guy? Número cinco. Yo le di una corbata. I gave him a tie. Yo le di una corbata. Y número siete. María le dio un pañuelo. María gave him a handkerchief. Okay, so. There, but still we get to see the grammar for to give. En el pretérito. Let's quickly review. Di, diste, dio, dimos, and dieron. Make sure you know the conjugated forms for the verb dar. If you have any questions on this activity, make sure that you've got them marked in red. Then you can ask me about those when we are conferencing together. Actividad 6. Look up the Bible verses listed right here and tell me who each of these persons saw. So, you're going to need your Bibles. It doesn't matter to me if you look these up in English and read them. If you're really brave, you might want to try and look them up in Espanol. You can go to BibleGateway.com and change your Spanish version. You can use the Reina Valera and read the verse in Spanish, or you can read it in English and tell me who these people saw. Modelo. We have Mateo 2.11, which is Matthew 2.11. Los Magos. Los Magos are the wise men. And so the answer here would be Los Magos. Vieron al niño y a María. The wise men saw the baby and Mary. Now, I hope you notice this ah right here and right here. Why do we have that ah there? Do you remember the ah personal? Whenever we have a person that is the object, we have to use that ah personal. Niño is baby, clearly a person. María is the name of Mary, obviously a person as well. So we had to use that ah for each of them. I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to do numero uno, tres, y cinco in some blank space in your workbook, and then we'll come back together and check your answers. Okay, so for numero uno, tres, y cinco, we have Jesus vio a Zaccheo, Jesus saw Zacchaeus, then numero tres, we have Nebuchadnezzar, which is hard enough to say in English, but I'm going to try it in Spanish too. Nabucodonosor vio a varones, saw men, numero tres. Y numero cinco, 
Pedro, Jacobo y Juan no vieron a nadie sino a Jesús solo. Peter, Jacob y John saw no one other than Jesus alone. Okay. If you have any questions on those, make sure those are marked in red and ask me questions for those as well. And that does wrap up our lesson, chapter 10, lesson 27a. That's the first part of lesson 27 for chapter 10. Don't forget to check the lesson plan and make sure you get homework done on our next lesson. I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any questions, please let me know. Adios, clase. Que Dios les bendiga.